Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar. We are ready to begin. Today's webinar is eligible for one contact hour. Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing is accredited as a provider of nursing continuing professional development by the American Nurses Credentialing Center's Commission on Accreditation. The speakers and planning committee members have disclosed no conflicts of interest. To receive contact hours for this educational activity, participants are required to attend the webinar and complete the evaluation form, which will be emailed to all attendees approximately one week after the webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be available via the Sigma repository within a few business days of recording. Following the presentation, we may have time for a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during the presentation, you may do so in the GoToWebinar control panel. You should see on your GoToWebinar control panel screen that you have a questions feature. This is where you can type in any question you'd like to pose to the presenters. Be sure to hit send so the message makes it to us. On behalf of Sigma, we would like to thank our speakers for sharing their expertise with us today. Our speakers will consist of the following. Karen, Rick, and Stephen. Nurse Karen is a Deputy Director at the Evidence-Based Healthcare South America, a Joanne Briggs Institute collaborating group encompassing Chile, Colombia, and Peru. She works as an academic at the Southern Scientific University in Peru, an ICU nurse and methodological support professional in the unit of evaluation of sanitary technology in the Ministry of Health of Chile with formation in public health with a focus of public policy. She works as a research advisor in quantitative studies because of her biostatistical and epidemiology training. Dr. Kwan is an assistant professor in the School of Nursing at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. He is specialized in gerontology nursing. Particular, his research interests include dementia care, cognitive frailty, and e-health technology. Nurse Paul is a Peruvian American nurse in the Texas Medical Center of Houston. His specialties include medical surgical, spinal cord injury, and national healthcare disaster professional. A seasoned advocate, he served with the American Nurses Association Political Action Committee, Texas Nurse Association, Government Affairs Committee, Nurses Organization of Veteran Affairs Legislative Committee, and the Association of Rehabilitation Nurses Health Policy Committee. Outside of nursing, Ms., uh, Mr. Paul, served as legislative political coordinator with the American Federation of Government Employees. All right, thank you very much um, for um, coming to this webinar. Um, the outcome of this webinar basically is to discuss um, some resources supporting you to transit into um, the nursing profession and also describe at least two ideas which can be implemented by the next coming years to facilitate a transition into a nursing specialty. And um, so without um, any overdue, so I would like to pass the time to uh, over to you, Stephen, for the first uh, for the first tip. Thank you, Rick. So tip number one, invest in you and your feet. Uh, in healthcare, you will be spending a lot of time in your feet if you haven't already and making sure you have the best footwear available, as well as compression stockings. That's an item that has been overlooked, can be overlooked early on. But when it comes to the footwear, don't be afraid to think outside of the box as far as what is best for you. Um, on a personal level, I have tried a number of the different brands out there that how has uh, healthcare provider choice, et cetera. And the footwear that has ended up being best for me is actually a pair of hiking boots. And uh, what it works best for me is that it has provided me the best traction in case there is any uh, spills on the floor. And more importantly, uh, I don't have any injuries whenever uh, something happens to go over my feet whether it 
head or in the heart, et cetera. So definitely that wants to invest in your uh, feet as best you can um, because it will serve you in the long run. Um, on that note, uh, Karen, is there is there anything else on that area that comes to mind that's worked for you? Yeah, thank you. In my case, uh, Stephen is um, I invest in my early uh, years uh, in nurse scrubs because as an IC, um, ICU nurse, you have to work a lot with your body. You have to move the patients and do some techniques. So you need to feel really comfortable uh, with your clothes. So at the beginning of my career, I bought uh, two scrubs um, that I have until today. So they are pretty good. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, I'll throw it over to Rick now for tip number two. All right, thank you, Stephen. Um, for the tip number two, it's about to invest in you and also your sleep. So um, getting some sleep, um, um, whatever, get some sleep wherever possible is always very important. You know, nurses always work on shift and inefficiency at work happens when there's a lack of sleep. And um, so uh, if you don't have enough sleep, um, very likely you, you will make a lot of medical errors and it, it's also not good um, for the patients and also safety. So um, what do you think about um, investing in you and sleep, Stephen? Something that I can't stress enough is to, when you have a nighttime routine, the thing that's worked best for me is by not watching any television and by not using my electronics. Um, once I started doing that, I found it significantly easier to, to fall asleep and also to be able to wake up far more refreshed. Um, there are other individuals that have also explored items such as binaural sleep um, patterns through a num whether through a streaming service or other websites. Um, and I've known a number of folks that that has worked very well for, for them. Uh, definitely avoid trying to uh, self-soothe on substances such as alcohol or, or other items. Uh, I can't emphasize enough that whatever habits you develop, uh, make sure it is in your best interest and for your health care in the long run. All right, great. So will you share with us um, how did you survive your first year? Uh, did, did you work in the shift even, or? Um, how do you survive yourself first year as a nurse having this problem or sleep? So my only experience with shift work in a professional environment has been with um, clinical deployments um, that I've taken to uh, Puerto Rico and um, Little Rock, Arkansas and in Dallas, Texas. And uh, I've normally worked day shift, but the transition from day shift to night shift um, some of the things that have helped me in adjusting at the beginning is uh, uh, um, melatonin. Melatonin helps me, and especially for those who are traveling in jet lag. There are definitely mm -hmm. other things that uh, I have tried, but when you are trying to do a dramatic change in, in shift work, you, it's even more important in my mind that you don't use the electronics. You want to, you know, get to bed as as quickly as possible. And for me, the transition from day shift to night shift, after about the third or fourth shift, is when my body will feel far more adjusted. Um, usually, if we take a shift such as 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., what I have found is that around 2 to 4 a.m., some people describe it as nausea. But for myself, it's always felt like hunger pains. And if I don't eat something, it's, I will just crash immensely. If I can get past 4 a.m., my body usually gets a second wind, and I'm able to successfully finish shift. Uh, but that's been my um, experiences with, with shift work. And uh, when I've had to do different items, I always try to schedule any appointments or meetings I have as close to the beginning of my shift, as close to uh, 
I don't want to be waking up four hours later for an appointment. I'm working on night shift. Stay as committed as you can um, to that schedule because it, your body will feel far worse if you're constantly trying to go from night shift to uh, a noontime lunch. So that, that would be the biggest thing I would emphasize is whatever shift is your normal shift, stick with it, including on your days off. Wow. Th well, thanks a lot. Um, very um, personal and very um, uh, precious experience sharing with us. Yeah, so why don't we move to the next slide? Tip number three. Yes, thank you. And um, also, um, apart from um, sleeping, also invest in you about um, your mind and also your body. So are we are we seeing a thing yet? Some um, invest in continuing education as a nurse. It is helpful in updating and improving your skill and knowledge. And treat yourself. Um, um, at the end of a tiring shift would always be helpful. Uh, would you, um, um, Karen? May I just want, um, ask your experience and how do you um, invest in yourself, in in your, in your mind and your body in your early career? Yeah, um, I invest a lot in my mind <laughs> because I, like all of us study a lot. So um, I did my first diploma the first year. I was a nurse, so in, in biostatistics, and I did a lot of other courses that were necessary. So we are constantly studying. This is part of uh, our role, I think of being a nurse um, and in relation uh, with the body I now uh, at the beginning I was not so aware of uh, of taking care of myself like for example food or exercising things like that uh, but um, I try to uh, incorporate that habits because when you are doing shifts, uh, you, shifts can really change your habits. So you need to um, uh, try to maintain that uh, in a healthy habits all the time. Um, in my case, I try to I focus on in food. For example, uh, in my shift, I carry a bottle of water and protein bars in my pocket because I don't know how it's going to be the chef. You can be at, at, in lunch at 3 p.m. or at 5, at 6 p.m. So you don't know. You have to be aware that you need uh, to have snacks in your bag and things like that. And because I'm a vegan, now food is really important for me. Um, and in relation with the, with the exercising, um, I incorporated that like two or three years then I was a nurse. Um, I started doing Pilates and then cardio like training and now yoga, but always try to have some routine uh, because the connection with the body is really important. Uh, and when you are working a lot and you are studying and in life it's like crazy sometimes, you need to be energized for uh, something. And for me, it's, it's working out for sure. So I think we need to move to tip number four. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think the tip number four is about to get to know your job. Um, always as a novice, um, we, we have difficulties understanding what we're expected to do because most of the time, uh, what we have been trained, or what we have learned from, uh, from the school, college, um, probably they are a little different from what we expected to do. So um, always get to know the extent of the job and, and keep them in mind and it's also always important. So may I um, ask Stephen, how, how do you think and what, what did you do? What are your tips to get a new job as a novice? I mean, one of the things I want to emphasize, especially for those nurses that are getting their first job, look at more than just what the hourly rate is or if there's a sign-on bonus. Especially nowadays, there's been a lot 
of high um, hourly rates for, for contract nursing in relation to the, the pandemic. Um, some of the things that aren't looked at close enough include, at least within the United States, and this will be different on uh, where you live and work around the world, but uh, definitely look at the total package as far as um, what is offered to you. You know, so I, I work at a facility where it, I definitively could, you know, jump on to some of these contract positions, but I have significantly more paid time off in the nursing role I have uh, than I would get if I signed up for, you know, some of these nursing um, contract uh, jobs where they're offering double what I'm currently making. There's significantly better health insurance with what I have. Um, and, and also, you know, especially in, in the United States, uh, not every place that you work has a labor union environment that is beneficial to workers. So as mentioned, I live and work in the Texas Medical Center. Texas uh, has a concept uh, which is common across the United States, not, not every state, but it's relatively common, known as right to work and at will. And the concept is that the employment relationship can end at any time by either the employee or the employer for good reason, bad reason, or no reason whatsoever. If you work in Texas, you can show up to work, and if the boss feels like terminating you, they could, and it's completely within the right, with one key exception, and that is if they terminate you because you are a part of a protected class, according to the Civil Rights Act. But by and large, because of that environment, if you want something that has a stronger um, protections from a labor union perspective, you would want to consider looking at states um, that have strong uh, you know, master agreements, or you would want to consider looking at working for the federal government because the federal government um, abides no matter where in the country you work, if you are working on federal property, those are the laws that would abide by, not what is on a state level. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much. Um, this is interesting because we don't have this problem in Hong Kong. <laughs> it's also something new to me. Yeah, and um, yeah, so let's move to the next slide about the tip five. So over to you, Karen. Thank you. Um, this is a good tip. Um, there are things to avoid and things not to avoid. And I want to start with the thing that you shouldn't avoid. Um, um, you shouldn't avoid to speak up for yourself or speak up for the patient and even for your team um i know that at the beginning of the career it's a little bit difficult to um to confront this situation that can be delicate or even unfair uh but um i think this this is important to uh acknowledge that this is this is part of your role uh, to be there for your patients, to be there for your colleagues. Um, and sometimes you need, for example, to clarify an indication uh, with a physician, and you, you need to do it because it's your job. Uh, so you shouldn't avoid this type of things that when you are, like at the beginning of the career, you try to not to do it because um, you try to uh, ask other people and not the right people. Um, so I think a, a direct, clear, and kind communication is key. And I want to um, stress that because most of the most of the people think that communication uh, should be all, only direct and, and clear. But being kind is something that is important in our uh, in our career. Um, and in the same line, I want to say that we should avoid passive aggressive communication. Um, and this happens a lot in nursing, okay? A lot. Um, gossip or like try to 
uh, say something out loud so the other person can hear you, but you're not saying them directly. So try to avoid um, rude behavior. Uh, this is really important because one of the biggest problems that we have in our career is uh, the work environment. So you don't want to contribute to that. Um, and I want to know uh, if, um, sorry, if uh, Steven, you have some like um, um, experience with this? So it can be natural for people to want to discuss gossip or other difficulties in the workplace in a less than diplomatic fashion. And what I'd strongly encourage is to you know, not join. And there's, there's a couple of different ways that I have uh, personally uh, avoided getting into you know, gossip mentality. Um, if I happen to be in the break room and there's gossip going on, I don't, I don't say anything. Um, or I try to immediately change the, the topic to something else that may be of interest to the unit. Um, there's, there's different ways to prevent a negative um, conversation that could be detrimental to the unit as well. And it goes back to um, something that um, you said earlier that I really like, which was to you know, be kind to those you're working with. Um, I'm reminded of a quote uh, that uh, I always try to remind myself of, and that is, you know, be kind to kind people. Be kind to unkind people, too. Because not you could be the nicest communicator out there, and someone may not necessarily respond in the manner that you wish for. Just keep in mind, don't take anything personally, especially if it's something that um, a patient says to you, because there can be, you have no idea all of the different stresses that an individual may be going through. So um, just always keep that in mind. And also be aware that different individuals respond to different communications. And so that's, that's definitely what I would um, emphasize as far as not just on how to deal with gossip in the workplace, but um, ways in building camaraderie with your, with your colleagues. Um, if you talk about the things that the colleagues are interested in outside of work, it is one of the best ways to not just get to know who they are, but to build a stronger relationship where um, you can work better as a team. Yeah, thank you. So um, we can move to tip six. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, the tip six, I think, is going to the meetings. Um, I think this is a very uh, tricky point because when, when we just start off, um, most of the time, uh, there are always a lot of meetings um, in the nursing professions, no matter what purpose could be. Um, but um, being new, I think um, there are always many reasons that we don't want to go to these meetings simply because they are not related to us. And uh, but all, we always be invited, or they are always open to us. Uh, we have been asked to go to the meetings. Um, when I first started, I think um, I, there are many reasons for me to decline going to these meetings, or better, to find other places because because usually the meetings is after working hours and and or even. During the working hours, you were, you were better reasons to take up the patients working to the meetings. But um, the longer or the more I spend time in these meetings, I found that um, there is also another very important reason uh, for attending to this meeting is that um, we, we actually need to build teams. And uh, nobody can work alone. And uh, how, but how could you build your team? How could people, um, how could you show your leadership to lead a group of people to work somewhere? That is always from the relationship um, we build with the people during these meetings. So uh, my suggestion is, uh, my tip is, always go to these meetings as much as you could. And I know that uh, sometimes it could be time wasting, but not just sit there, but also listen to what people are saying. 
uh, the expertise and the interest and what so that you know uh, when, when you need help uh, where to go to we need to build a team um, who to seek help from and um, and also um, try to say something in a meeting and so that uh, people would know your face because um, they, they need to build teams as well they need people to work with them as well but um, if they don't know you how could they find you so um, I think I'm um, going to meetings and listening to what people say and also try to say something sharing your expertise or even your, just your interest and it will be helpful for people to reach you out if they have projects or collaborations that they need to do i think this is um, always a very good reason apart from the primary purpose of the meeting so um, always keep going to meetings as soon as you could if you you, you could afford and so also may i ask karen what do you think about going to meetings and do you think um, being part of the team really make a difference yeah i think it makes a difference um but for being honest at the at the beginning of my career i tried to avoid avoid every every meeting that i could <laughs> um i didn't i didn't love that that type of um meetings or interactions because for me i was super focused on results so um for me it was like i'm doing my job if my job is is good that's that's it i don't need this this interaction um so and i tried to avoid it avoid it because um in that type of uh like meetings um it can people can mix personal life with, with working life and i was super uh like reserved with my private life i didn't want to share anything and i felt a little bit uncomfortable when i was when i was uh at at this meeting so uh then i realized that i can talk about other things like when you are coping with gossip like steven like changing the subject like if somebody is asking you something really personal, you can like say, yeah, or you can say, no, I don't want to say that, or I don't want to share that. And it's, 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 um, it's fine with it. The, the people is, uh, should be fine with that. Um, so when I start going, going to meetings and like uh, Rick said, like hearing the things, that the people say. I understand that this is a way to, to understand the, the organization, how the organization works, uh, who is the person you need to go and ask a favor, for example, or how, uh, or you can understand why people behave the way they behave. Uh, because you need to be there and observe. So I understand that this was a chance to construct a good and healthy work environment at the end. Thank you very much, um, Karen, for sharing. So let's move to the next tip. So over to you, Stephen. All right, so tip number seven, always approach with positivity and a big smile. Uh, during the pandemic, if you wear a face mask on a regular basis, the big smile may be difficult to convey. But as many here are aware, um, we smile with more than just our, our, our mouths. We smile with our eyes. You can tell the difference when someone is faking a smile and when someone truly um, has a genuine smile. And you know, there's many, healthcare workers are going through some of the most difficult situations. And while we can't control directly what is happening to us, we can control you know, our response and our reaction to it. And keep in mind that you know, patients, we may be the only bit of uh, positivity that they may experience. Um, so keeping that central positive attitude is, is key in, in everything, whether it's within nursing and uh, beyond. Uh, Karen, anything uh, that you think of related to physical attitude um, or uh, presence that you found makes a difference? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, this is really important for me. Uh, well, I smile a lot, <laughs> and um, I I do it because I have a family that smiles a lot at the bit um, uh, in the first place, and. For the career, it was really important for me because I worked as, uh, for three, three years um, in, um, in a company that provides services to different hospitals. So uh, for three years, I was the new one, like always. So people can be really rude because they are like, uh, you get to the hostel and, and they are there and the, if their house, their house so they want to put uh, their rules and be like a little bit like uh, they can be a little bit cocky even. Um, but this is related. This is related with uh, they don't they at the beginning they don't trust you because they don't know you. So that's that's fair. And um, also because they have bad experience in the past. For example, some mistake that some nurse uh, made and they impact the patient, for example. Uh, so with this type of situation, they can be really rude. But uh, if you maintain a good like attitude and you're positive and you are like open to learning everything, uh, someone someone is going to adopt you <laughs> yeah and that's going to help you a lot in the organization so i always had some some a person that helping me uh helped me a lot and um the other thing that i, I want to say about this tip is that you need to sit you need to have this attitude and say hello to everyone and sometimes people forget about this. Um, we are professionals, okay, but we are human beings. So we need to say hello to everyone, uh, to the cleaning lady. To, I, it doesn't matter the role that has in the facility. Um, you need to be... Um, to to have a smile and and, and say uh, um, and say hello to everyone because it's really hurtful for different people uh, that one professional passing by without saying anything. So in my experience, when I talk with uh, like for for example the cleaning people, uh, they always. Um, they always um, have something bad to say about nurses. So <laughs> try to say, try to be polite and be positive. This is really important. So we can move with tip eight. Right. Um, this tip is about educate, educate, and educate. Yeah, education is just so important. And uh, particularly in Hong Kong, um, nurses, uh, most of the time, they, they think that the patients know they were what they expected to do. But when they behave, something uh, not, ex not uh, ex what we're expecting them to do. And we sometimes we feel frustrated, um, particularly in the, in the world when they call it, uh, cooperating with procedures. But actually, um, the patient has a right to know about what they need to, to they need to know about the drugs, about the procedures. And um, so, may I ask Karen? Do you feel that patients and relatives education is really a type of advocacy, or how do you think about patient education or health education? Uh, well, I think um, education is a way to empower the patient, for sure, uh, the patient and the and the family. Um, you prepare them to continue um, uh, the care in their houses. And this is really important because you give independence to the patient. And I want to tell uh, one of um, something that happened to me uh, last year when I, was, when I was working in an ICU uh, for the pandemic. 
um, I had a patient that had a cancer relapse and she has a, she had a colostomy and I had to do the wound care. So I bring all my implements. I went to the room and she was awake. Um, and I started talking with her um, and explaining all the procedures step by step. And she was so grateful because uh, she was really nervous because um, she she's going to be she uh, she are, is going you are going to leave the hospital really like quickly and never and nobody to tell her uh, what to do with the wound so she was really grateful and sometimes we forget that we are doing procedures to a patient to a person and as you said uh rick uh the patients have the uh, right to know uh everything so yeah i think this is a way to um to empower patients thank you karen let's move to the next slide all right uh, this this tip is about spending time with people no, oh, well, I think um, in, in, in the world, uh, particularly in, in, in Hong Kong, we're taking care of a lot of patients by one nurse. And uh, most of the time spent on um, doing procedures, working on papers, and also um, handling equipment. And sometimes we miss out opportunities staying with patients or people. And I, I personally think that stay, spending time with people heals. So what do you think, Stephen? What is your experience? I mean, as we were talking about earlier on how you want to develop a positive relationship with your uh, coworkers, you want to develop a positive relationship with your patients. You don't necessarily know how long they're going to be with you. And so you want to get them to know beyond what they're in the hospital for. And so, you know, something that I love doing with my patients, uh, you know, in the United States, American football is right around the corner. Um, there's uh, baseball season is at its prime. Uh, current positive current events, you know, I try to talk about things that people want to think about, not necessarily the, the tragedies that are going on um, everywhere, but develop a genuine interest in your patients. And uh, I have found that many of them are, are so thankful to discuss something beyond illness with someone in healthcare. But uh, yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, Stephen. Right. Yeah, I, I, I like talking about three ball with my patients too. <laughs> so uh, let's move to the next slide, um, the tip number 10. Yeah, okay. So this is help others. Um, well, I like this tip, obviously. Uh, and, and I think this is related for helping other, for helping your colleagues, for example, um this is important because you you bond you create relationships and you when you are helping others uh you don't uh realize how people can be like they are going to be they want to be reciprocal with you uh so you can create a circle of uh of people that can be supportive can support you and even when you have a, a bad moment or everything so i think um well i think helping others is part of our role like nurses so helping a colleague is bringing the care to the team not only to uh your patients or the families uh yeah um you have to care your colleagues too so um I think that most of the people don't do it, or a lot of people don't do it, because they think it's a waste of time, and they think they are going to lose time in their own jobs, they're going to be late. Uh, I heard this I heard this type of uh, arguments uh, um, a, lot of, a lot of times. Um, so, but, um, I think that the important thing about this is balance when you're helping others and you are completing your task. So if you if you keep a, a balance, you don't have any problem with this. 
So about helping others um, has been there um, help you in the past, Stephen? Absolutely. I mean, if opportunities arise where I see a coworker that is lumped with many tasks, and um, if I'm able to assist, I will go out of my way to uh, reach out to them and uh, offer them assistance. And then if they say, yes, please help me out, then I will absolutely go in there. If they say, no, I got it, then I will respect their wish on that too. Uh, but um, most of the time, uh, any assistance is greatly appreciated. And you never know when you're going to be drowning and those that you've helped out, they'll remember when you helped them and they will be more inclined to go out of their way to offer you assistance. That's what I would emphasize. Yes, great. So um, be open to suggestions. Um, I like this tip because uh, when I was young, I was super insurgent. <laughs> I wanted to do everything uh, on my way. I didn't respect a lot of things. I hate uh, structures. I was kind of a rebel. Um, but honestly, I felt that nobody understood the, the things that I wanted to do and why I went, wanted to do it. So a lot of people in the past, they'd give me advices, but in a threaty way. So I didn't took uh, that type of advice because it was like, okay, um, this is not the thing that I want to hear. Uh, but in 2015, I got to an institution and I knew two women leaders that were amazing. Um, this uh, was when I was uh, a teacher. Um, so they uh, teach me a lot of things about how to do uh, my teaching and also about my about how should I behave? But this this wasn't a kind way. It was like, well, no, you can be like this, and they and they tried to explain me. They were not threatening me. So, um, so this was um, awesome for me. Um, they shared their own experience to try to uh, give me some examples. Why should I take? one decision and not another and um and they give me the chance also to be creative uh i wanted i wanted that so badly uh to be creative and to break some structures that were like all structures that they, they were uh the best way to do things to with the students um and they understand and so it was a it was a great uh, relation uh, that I had with with them, and it was the first time that I felt that I was in the right place, um, that I fit in. So I think mentors are like great, great. They they can they can change your, your lives um, for sure. So uh, Rick. Um, what advice did you receive in the past that uh, you keep that until today? Um, I think um, the most important thing is when I, uh, I, I think I'm just like you. Uh, when, when I was young, I was very defensive to suggestions. But um, um, I think the most important suggestion that my mentor gave me is that um, when people talk to you, there's always a message. There's always something that you can learn from it. You don't, you don't necessarily to, uh, to take everything and to copy, to exactly follow what they say. But um, think about how this suggestion click with your experience and your knowledge and then blend them together to regenerate, recreate something new. That is always very important to um, um, to your work because people's experience and people's uh, suggestions are always the crystallizations of the experience. It will always be helpful in some way, not necessarily to be um, to, uh, it, all the way. So um, yeah, this is a tip that I got from my um, senior, or that which is very useful. I'm still keeping this till now. 
Yes, thank you very much, Jen. So let's move to the tip number 12. Um, so um, over to you, Stephen. So organization goes a long way. Uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel as far as you know, finding the organization that works best for you. Um, but definitely find something that is best that fits you and making sure you are completing tasks that are both urgent and what's important uh, so that you can stay on task both on the shift and on your career as a whole. Um, Rick, is there any organizational tips that uh, first thing that comes to mind for early career nurses? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I think um, the nurses always face um, many different new task every day and so things has happened very suddenly so um in my experience is um i always like to um after the procedures all the time you you have your supervisors or mentors or senior people working with you and they give you advice but uh, at, at the first time you always do it in a very unorganized way but after that is the most important thing is to go back to reflect to think back to procedures and write them down in an organized way and then reveal revise them and the most importantly, if next time you know that this is going to happen, take that take that out, okay, and read them through, do some revision before you do it again, and I think that will make you uh, to do it in a more organized way next time, and so that you keep on your uh, uh, skills and everything to keep on track in an organized way. So that is my tip. Yeah, I'm definitely a big fan of uh, reflection. So let's move to the next one, tip number thirteen, which we have interwoven. But get to know your colleagues. And so um, I want to uh, immediately send this to Karen. But yeah, beyond nursing, there are many individuals that you can learn from, um, such as assistant personnel. And so um, have you ever functioned in a role uh, beyond nursing uh, and interacted with the healthcare team? No, I never have functioned in, in that role. Uh, one of my best friends is an, is an assistant. Uh, an assistant nurse, and um, we made friends when we, when we, uh, I was a nurse and she was an, an assistant, and everyone was like, oh my God, why they are friends? Like, um, because of this like hierarchy, there's things that I don't get it of, about society. Um, but I think that they make our work better. Uh, if they didn't do the things that they do, uh, our work, let be like like um impossible uh in fact so for me they are wonderful i love them. i love them <laughs> thank you we can go to tip 14 to rick all right this tip is about to maintain your integrity yes um what what do you think um stephen how, how integrity helps our professions development as a, a new career nurse? I mean, integrity defines us as nurses. I, I mean, if you don't have integrity, people can't trust you. And if they can't trust you, they can't trust the healthcare or being able to work with you, plain and simple. Right, so uh, if uh, there's already something in, my, in, in front of me doing right or wrong, I always think about whether um, it harms my integrity or integrity of professions before I act. Yes, let's move, to, uh, let's move to the next tip, number 15. 15 yeah. yeah, tip 15, think before you answer. Uh, this, is, this is a great tip. I, well, I love all the tips. <laughs> um, this is important because most of, the, most of the time we think a lot of, we have a lot of thoughts and the thoughts are a, a little bit crude or are out of focus. Um, when we one advice from Buddhism is that you don't have to uh, like always trust your own thoughts. So try to take a moment to reflect about the reality, about the situation, and then you can speak up. I think this is really important in every moment of your life. Uh, so Rick. Um, can you um, tell in an experience when this tip is was really important? 
Yeah, I think being a nurse, we're being always forced to believe that everything is so urgent, so 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 important that we need to respond immediately. But uh, because of this, under stress, we make mistakes and our answers are always flawed. So uh, what I think is um, always calm down and think about um, um, let, take some time to think about the answers before we give it. Otherwise, when things is being answered, there's no way back. Yes, that's that. So, so true. <laughs> okay. All right. Tip number 16, leave your work at the hospital or office. And conversely, also leave whatever is going on in your personal life um, separate from work. It's important to keep work life at work and personal life, personal life. It goes kind of back to gossip. If you talk too much about uh, maybe the personal relationships you have out there, it can be used against you. So I just want to emphasize, keep work within work so that when you go home, you can be as calm and relaxed as possible and vice versa. Uh, if there are things in your personal life, keep it separate from work. Um, Karen, uh, is there anything uh, that you have found in relation to coping with this? Well, for me, this is, this is one of the, my biggest challenge, like at all, like, in my life because uh, as a teacher and a researcher like your life becomes your work and like it everything mixed it up it's really like weird and you are reading something and it is 6 p.m and then it, at nine you like realize that yours you you keep like working all the time so um I try to put like a policy time, like I don't do anything else until like uh, 8 p.m. Um, since since 8 p.m. I do like my normal life, but it's really difficult. So I'm not the best person to to advise <laughs> about this. <laughs> Let's uh, move on to the next tip, uh, tip number 17. Uh, let's see, uh, and just to be brief, because we want to you know, make sure we end on time, uh, remain calm all the time. Uh, let's jump to uh, tip number 18. 18, okay. Well, um, experience makes perfect. Um, this is related with every technique or everything that, uh, everything that we do. We, when we are doing uh, one thing, a couple of times we can like manage the technique so we don't have to worry about so much about that um i think we we need to slow down and don't be um anxious about like make it perfect the first time or the first 10 times in some techniques uh rick um at this point of your career your career uh what do you feel about do um uh what thing you can do now that you couldn't yeah, at I the think, beginning of your career right I, i'm also a fan of this quote um just two points first if we believe that experience makes perfect so we could we, we should allow ourselves to err and because we make mistakes uh, we, we need to accumulate experience before we can perfect. And our thing is, we want to make perfect. We need to consult our experience. So everything, but every time before we start working on something, always think back about how I did last time and how I can do better in the next time to make to, to make the next next task and the next uh, ob uh, objectives or tasks to be perfect. Great, thank you. Let's go to yes, tip nineteen. Uh, be a nursing ambassador. The strongest quote I've ever heard on this is that you are not a member of the profession until you are a member of a professional organization, whether that be through Sigma Theta Tau or uh, something specific to your specialty. Um, if you truly view nursing as your career and not just as a job, if you want to develop to the body of knowledge and be up to date with all that's going on, you need to be a nursing ambassador. You need to be involved with a, a professional organization. Um, Rick, uh, is what does that look like to you? Yeah, so I always believe so. Uh, nurses 
being a nurse is not just a job, but my profession, my career. So everything I everything I uh, I do or everywhere I go, um, I would try to uh, make people thinking about because people know that we are nurses, and um, so people trust us. So. Um, how 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 should we how we act and what we do is to promote the positive image of nursing, and also it is more important than just in our workplace. It's also important out of the workplace because people know us more, see us more outside of work. So this is what I think and what I believe and how I behave. Awesome. Uh, never forget the reason why you become a nurse. Um, this is super important. Um, being a nurse in countries like um, like the, the countries in Latin America is really difficult. Uh, it's really hard. Um, um, I know that it's hard in other parts of the globe, obviously. But here I can I can talk about uh, our reality. We have a lot of responsibility, and because we are with the patient all the time, we are the one responsible of bringing all the health team together. Um, even though uh, in countries like mine, we are treated like second class workers, and if you're a woman, this is this is hard and this is uh, more hard. Um, so because it's even harder because we have a machista culture and we have a lot of misogynist behavior inside of this the, the different organizations so it's really difficult uh but at the same time i always remember that i study nursing because i wanted to help others but i wanted to help others in a close way in a deeper way and when i found out that in nursing you can study psychology anthropology and physiology all at the same time i know i knew that it was my career so i try uh to keep in mind that and later i understood that this is humanizing here so i'm really proud of being a nurse and i'm really proud of being part of this community um so um rick what do you think about this yes of course i think this is very true um sometimes we do uh things we will go off track but when we always reflect and think about uh, why what's the reason you become a nurse for me i think the primary reason is to move to promote the health of the people if um, you always refer back to this reference point you will never go off track I want to thank uh, our presenters today. That was excellent. And I think that you shared some wonderful tips and we want to thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your personal stories. Um, at this time, we are all out of time. So what I would suggest is if you uh, really wanted to connect with our presenters, feel free um, to reach out to them either uh, via social media or, um, if you want to connect offline, that would be wonderful. So um, another great way that you could connect with uh, our presenters is you can connect with them via the Sigma, the circle, which is um, a great networking tool that you have at your fingertips. We want to thank our presenters today for all this great information. Sigma is grateful that you took the time to share this uh, information with our audience, and we look forward to hearing more from you in the future. As a reminder to our attendees, please uh, submit this, um, submit the evaluation upon uh, completing it, you will receive your certificate for continuing professional development. Uh, as always, you can check out Sigma's upcoming webinars, podcasts, and resources to support you and your colleagues at www.sigmanursing.org. Also, previously recorded webinars and podcasts are freely available on the Sigma repository. Thank you so much for joining us today and have a wonderful day.